Big thanks to Ren for sponsoring this video. Click the link in the description box below to calculate and offset your carbon footprint. This is Emmy Nota. She was a brilliant mathematician that made some very important contributions to the world of maths and physics. Albert Einstein once described her as the most significant creative mathematical genius thus far produced since the higher education of women began. And today we'll be taking a look at Emmy Nota's most famous mathematical theorem, one that's scientifically important and also very satisfying to learn about as a science lover. Hello there, my name's Spark, and I like to talk about fun physics concepts on this channel. If you enjoy this video, then please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more. Let's get into it. Now, first things first, here's what Nota's theorem actually says. It states that there's a fundamental link between different kinds of symmetry in the universe and conservation laws, like conservation of energy and conservation of momentum. But what do we mean by each of these things? Let's take a look at the symmetries part first. For the purposes of this video, any system that we're studying has a type of symmetry if it behaves in the same way even when we change something about the system. For example, let's imagine we've got a ball hanging out in deep outer space. We're using outer space just to keep things simple so we don't have to account for gravity or any of the other forces acting on the ball. Now here's the thing, the ball will show many different kinds of behavior depending on what we do to it, right? For example, right now it's just hanging out, nothing noticeable is happening to it. But if we were to slam it against a wall at a certain speed, it would compress and warp as it collided and then it would bounce off again. The important question here is this. Would this ball behave differently at a different point in space if we did the exact same things to it? In other words, does the ball experience different laws of physics at different points in space? For example, at this point in space, the ball was just chilling doing nothing. But if we moved it to this point in space, would it suddenly explode? Or maybe the atoms making it up would suddenly disintegrate because the electromagnetic forces between them suddenly became weaker. No, right? That's because the laws of physics the ball experiences here are the same as the laws of physics it experiences here. Similarly, we can think about slamming the ball into a wall here versus here. If we threw the ball in exactly the same way in both places, then would the ball's behavior look the same? Well, yes, because the laws of physics are again the same here and here, and also at every other point in this space. This is known as translational symmetry for the purposes of this video. The laws of physics are the same at different locations in space. Similarly, we can think about a symmetry in time. If the ball is bouncing off the wall like this at some point in time, then we repeat the experiment sometime later in exactly the same way, then we'd expect to see the same result in the repeated experiment. Because, you guessed it, the laws of physics stay the same over time. It's not like suddenly at 3 o'clock on a Thursday any particles colliding on walls can suddenly be passed right through the wall, right? And as a third example, we can think about rotating our entire system. Because we've got no gravity to account for, and this would work if we carefully accounted for gravity were it to exist in our system, by the way, the ball would behave the same way if the system was orientated this way, as if it was orientated this way, or any other angle for that matter. Again, the laws of physics are not dependent on the angle at which the system is orientated. Now, before we continue, I want to thank Ren for sponsoring this video. We're all familiar with the climate crisis at this point, and I think that there's something we can all do to help, whether that's encouraging companies and governments to take this issue seriously, or actually reducing our own carbon footprints. Recently, I've been continuing to take small steps to change things up and reduce my carbon footprint, such as walking more than driving, cutting down on meat consumption, making responsible purchases, and so on. Ren is a simple but effective way of making a difference in the climate crisis. Their website, linked below, allows you to calculate your carbon footprint and then gives you ways to reduce it. You can also make a monthly contribution to offset your carbon footprint by funding diverse carbon reduction projects like tree planting, mineral weathering, and rainforest protection. Ren will then meticulously quantify what impact each project is having and send you monthly updates so that you know that your money is making a difference. Here's the thing, Ren carefully vets the projects that they work on so that the money being spent on them by the members is allowing positive changes to happen that would have otherwise not been possible. The projects need to have a measurable impact so that we know exactly how much CO2 is being offset and that it stays out of the atmosphere for a long period of time. 
Wren is a benefit corporation with a legally binding charter, meaning their work is as transparent as possible. So if you'd like to calculate your carbon footprint and find out more about Wren, then please check out the first link in the description box below. Helps out the channel, of course, and the first 100 of you to sign up to Wren using my link in the description box will get the first month of your subscription for free. So please do check out the link below. Huge thanks once again to Wren. Now let's get back to talking about Emmy Nota. Now, remember that in this discussion about symmetries that we've been having, it's not the object itself that we're studying that needs to be symmetrical. Instead of the ball, we could think about an unevenly shaped rock, or any other object for that matter. The important thing is that it's the behavior of the object that stays the same when we change its position, or angle, or what point of time we consider it in. In other words, then, it's the laws of physics themselves that remain the same at different points in space, or at different rotation angles, or at different points in time. The actual objects that we study, the ball, the rock, just help us to see that this is the case. Notice theorem states that these symmetries, these unchanging laws of physics at different positions or times or angles, directly result in conservation laws that we've often been taught at high school physics. Each symmetry has an associated conservation law. The symmetry at different positions is associated with the conservation of linear momentum. The symmetry at different times is associated with the conservation of energy. And the symmetry at different rotation angles is associated with the conservation of angular momentum. So, how can we understand this link between symmetries and conservation laws? Well, the most convenient way to do this is to take a look at some rather interesting maths. First of all, we're going to define a quantity called the Lagrangian. Named after Joseph-Louis Lagrange, it's very simple. For any system we study, its Lagrangian is just the kinetic energy of the system, or the movement energy of the system, minus the potential energy of the system, or the energy due to the position of the system or its various parts, relative to other stuff that exerts forces on it. For example, the potential energy of a ball above the surface of the Earth changes because the Earth exerts a gravitational force on the ball as the ball changes position. So the ball's position relative to the Earth determines its potential energy. Now, this quantity, the Lagrangian, doesn't really mean anything physically. It's not like its sibling quantity, the Hamiltonian, defined as the kinetic energy plus the potential energy, which is just the total energy of the system. The Lagrangian doesn't have any such physical meaning, but it is a very useful quantity to do some extremely handy maths with. One example of this is that the Lagrangian follows this equation, known as the Euler-Lagrange equation. Now, this thing looks quite daunting, but I've made a whole video explaining it in detail, so please check it out up here if you're interested. And it's also going to be linked in the description box below. For our purposes, though, we need to know a couple of things. First of all, we need to know that this Q thing here is a placeholder. Q just represents any relevant coordinate within our system. For example, if we're studying the movement of a ball on a table surface, then we'd likely use coordinates such as X and Y to represent the position of the ball on the table. And hence, we could replace Q with X to give us one equation, and with Y to give us another equation. In other words, then, the Euler-Lagrange equation allows us to generate one new equation for each coordinate relevant to our system. Now, we don't need to go into huge detail about what each term means in the Euler-Lagrange equation. Again, I've got a whole video discussing the specifics. All we need to know for now is that we can think of this term, like the force exerted on our system, in each coordinate direction. So if we swap Q with X, then this represents the force exerted in the x direction on our system. And this term represents the momentum of our system in the x direction. This is a huge oversimplification, but it helps us to see how the equation looks like a more familiar idea, Newton's second law of motion. Because now, this equation says that the force on our system in the x direction, for example, is equal to the rate of change of momentum in the x direction, or how quickly the momentum changes over time in the x direction. This is exactly Newton's second law, which we more commonly see written as F is equal to ma, or force is equal to mass times acceleration. Anyway, so here's the point. If our system has some sort of symmetry in one coordinate, like x, then we can think of this as the Lagrangian not depending on x. The kinetic energy doesn't depend on position anyway, and the potential energy, in this case we're saying, does not change depending on the position of our system, or 
objects within our system, then this means that the term dl by dx is equal to zero. Because remember, dl by dx literally measures how l changes depending on x. And we're saying l doesn't change depending on x. So what we're left with is that the right-hand side of the equation is zero. And what this right-hand side is measuring is simply how quickly the total momentum of the system in the x direction changes over time, or how the momentum changes depending on time. Well, if the total momentum doesn't change depending on time, then this means that over time it stays constant. Or in other words, the total momentum of the system is constant over time. Momentum is conserved. So this is one way to understand the link between a symmetry, mathematically shown by the independence of the Lagrangian on one of our coordinates, and the conservation of momentum in that coordinate direction. Once again, this is a massively oversimplified description that does not account for all of the mathematical possibilities of the Euler-Lagrange equations, but the real description is just a more complicated version of this. And the way that we've understood the relationship between symmetry and conservation laws is the most convenient way, in my opinion, to visualize it without having to do some complicated maths. There are also a lot more special cases and caveats to Notice Theorem that I may discuss in a future video if you'd be interested in that. Please do let me know in the comments down below. And with all of that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, then please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and hit that bell for more fun physics content. Please check out my merch linked in the description box below. It features a quantum dice design based on a famous quote from Albert Einstein. And finally, a huge thanks to all of my Giga patrons and all of the others over on my Patreon page. That's also linked in the description if you'd like to support me on there. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you very soon.